the optimal approach to AML in the relapse setting? So that, that's a tough question because I think now in 2022, there are so many different approaches. You know, it used to be that all we had was we would say, give reinduction chemotherapy or, or you know, um, enroll on a clinical trial. We still want everyone to enroll on a clinical trial because we think that's how we make progress. But for those people who don't have access to a clinical trial, there are a whole bunch of different options. And what those options are really depend on the molecular subtype of acute myeloid leukemia that you might have. So for example, if you have a new IDH1 or IDH2 mutation, you might give an IDH inhibitor. If you have a FLT3 mutation, you might give a FLT3 inhibitor. And there are a variety of FLT3 inhibitors out there. Uh, maybe if you have a, a NPM1 mutation, maybe you think about giving a menin inhibitor as part of a clinical trial. Um, there's a lot of work being done of giving the combination of azovenetoclax for relapse and refractory patients, or triplets, azoven and another novel agent for relapse and refractory patients. So um, my number one uh, message is, at the time a patient relapses, you want to do another next generation sequencing panel to see if any new mutations have popped up. Number two is you want to, depending on what the mutational profile is, you really want to target your clinical trial approach or your standard of care approach to what those um, mutations are. The last thing I'll say, not to belabor the point, is there is this whole arm of AML that's being investigating using immunotherapies, like CAR T cells, like NK, um, NK directed therapies. And I think those are things that are also going to become uh, much more prominent over the next few years.